When I first played Dishonored way back in the year that LEGO Batman 2 came out, I honestly didn't really care for it. Wait, what? What's- No, I mean like I can't- I like it now, don't worry. Like, no, no, seriously, no. Stop, my opinions changed. No, seriously, stop. Stop, I'm better now. Stop, please, please, I'm better now. Now, a whopping nine years later after its release, now I know Dishonored is such an amazing game, I think I might actually be too dumb to properly convince you how fantastic it is. And thankfully, due to the mountains and mountains of Dishonored analysis, video critiques, and video essays all coming out, this year, for some reason? I, I don't think I necessarily have to, but I'm gonna try anyway. At its core, Dishonored is a first-person stabby, super-powered hitman, every level is vertical for some reason, steampunk, whale cum, <laughs> hyper-violent sneak-em-up. Which is the elongated way of saying, the game is whatever you want it to be. Each mission has a specific target that you have to blow up, stab, I don't understand. poison, shoot, throw off a balcony, Blast into a wall. Poison the wrong guy and have the target lock down the building and enter a secret room, which is the perfect spot to fight him in a duel. Stop time, shoot an arrow, go around him, teabag, jump on him, then resume time. Destroy the poison, watch the target murder some dude that may or may not have been important for later in the game, then kill him with a rat swarm. Or knock him out with a sleeping dart, drag the target to an interrogation room, and brand him with the heretic's brand that leaves him excommunicated from the government. Or, you know, really any other way you can think of taking him down. All those examples were from the first mission, and really those were just what was at the top of my head. Every level in the game gives you options upon options upon options upon options to how you want to play. Dishonored to a T is one of those games that can be almost completely different every time you play through it. It's kind of like dating. Sure, you can spy on whoever you're crushing on through a peephole like anyone would, or you can go the more confident Chad Strutt way. Can't you see I'm about to bathe? Corvo. Under other circumstances, I assure you I might welcome your advances. But rats, plague, and tyranny have a way of killing the mood. And just like all masterpieces of the medium, Dishonored has a hub world. Kind of. After each mission, you return to the Hound Pits Pub, great name, where you can talk to the NPCs that give you your missions, buy ammo, items, and upgrades from schematics you find in the world, see optional cutscenes that expand upon the lore and the world of the game, or just get lost because the whole area is designed like one of the labyrinthian levels you boat to. Hmm, I wonder why they designed the hub like a level! To put it simply and bluntly, Arcane Studios creates the best level design in the industry. And yes, that's objective fact. Go play literally any of their games for 30 seconds and I promise you'll see what I mean. Each area feels like a small sandbox that is filled to the brim with side content, easily missable story moments, pounds and pounds of loot, and absolute top tier stealth guard banter. Should we, Should we gather, gather for whiskey, whiskey and cigars, cigars tonight? tonight? Indeed, Indeed, I believe, I believe so. so. <laughs> While it may not have the sheer girth, <laughs> God damn it. While it may not have the sheer girth in terms of map size as other games, Dishonored maximizes its player space by putting in tons of verticality within its level design. Buildings have multiple different entrances and often different floors to get in from. This is most evident in the fact that each level pretty much has the map getting pushed higher and higher vertically, rather than going wider and wider horizontally. Pushing this verticality to the extreme, the last level is a lighthouse for god's sakes, come on! Why don't more games do this? Why can't we have Arthur Morgan ride up on the y-axis for just like a minute, rather than on the x-axis for like an hour? Come on, game designers! Wait, 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 hold up, is the z-axis- In 3D it's a z-axis, right? Up is a z-axis, right? Am I right? Am I right? Oh my god, I'm not a good game designer, am I? Oh. I mean, if you take one look at the credits, you can see the team had 19 level designers and environmental artists. They really, really cared about Princess Peach's castle being fun to run around in. But between the gameplay that is only limited by the player's creativity, and level design that promotes movement and the freedom the player needs for the dozens upon dozens of gameplay mechanics to shine, is the city of Dunwall. A city under attack by a rat plague, the day you come back from playing the classic game of WHO PUT THIS RAT IN MY SOUP in another kingdom, our silent protagonist Corvo Atano witnesses the death of his non-girlfriend girlfriend in front of his non-daughter daughter, and is framed and thrown in jail for the crime. You could say he is, uh, dishonored, if you will. <laughs> Inspired by 19th century London, the city of Dunwall is beautifully realized through decrepit alleyways, lavish manners, an industrialized fishing industry powered by whale cum, and both Victorian and brutalist architecture. And within this whale society is a complicated hierarchy of government officials, religious figures, moonshining thugs, nobility class members, and of course zombie hobos. 
all of which you will be putting in the dirt however you see fit. Just like every other mid to late 7th console gen game, there is an all or nothing morality system depending on how you play. If you feel the desire to Patrick Bateman every single guard or smuck you come across, the city will be considered high chaos, and missions will feature more infected zombie type enemies that suffer from the plague, more rats, and more guards will pop up. If you are the squeamish type who can't handle the M, M and mature, mature and won't kill anyone, then the city and later missions will be in low chaos mode. Less guards, less plague going around, all around better. This affects the narrative of the game, as your rent-a-daughter and aspiring protagonist Emily Caldwin watches and hears about how you handle the citizens of Dunwall. If you play like a cool dude, Emily will grow up to be a cool dudette and will be the empress of ripping and tearing people. Or if you play non-fun baby mode, Emily will grow up to be a non-fun baby and bring peace and prosperity to Dunwall. Ooh, how exciting! Or at least until the sequel. While the morality system isn't perfect, I do think it's a step above Dishonored's contemporaries at the time. How you play the game, changing the game world itself, is much better than Hey, yes or no, nuke this city. Hey, yes or no, kill this five-year-old girl. Hey, do you want the poster that makes you look like God or the one that makes you look like Hitler? <laughs> All those games are good, I promise. I like that one. Right on! Should you play Dishonored? Let's be real, if you're watching this, you've already played it, but now you have even more confirmation bias, that's great. And honestly, I can't really think of any glaring objective flaws within the game. Besides a bit of jank, the gameplay systems, spectacular level design, and narrative woven straight into the gameplay and game world make for a game that I honestly think everyone who loves video games needs to play. So now, when you and your friends just refuse to accept the fact that those decade-old games from 2012 just aren't relevant anymore, and you guys start arguing about which game is the best, we can all safely say that it's LEGO Batman too. But Dishonored comes pretty close. Welcome. 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 Welcome.